CNN cover story, those claims overnight that the world's first genetically edited babies have been born. Of course, there's a lot of controversy around this claim. Now, this kind of gene surgery is banned in so many countries. The scientist behind the procedure says it was intended to protect the babies from future HIV infection. Dr. Ashton is standing by with more, but first, Ariel Resha, you have our attention. Good morning. Yeah, this is a big story, Robin. Good morning to you. That Chinese doctor championing this achievement as a breakthrough, saying his goal was to create resistance to HIV. If the claims are proven true, it would be a profound and highly controversial leap in science and in ethics. Overnight, an astonishing and dubious claim. A scientist in China saying he created the world's first genetically engineered babies. Two beautiful little Chinese girls named Lulu and Lala came crying into the world as healthy as any other babies. The team of geneticists and fertility specialists announcing the so-called breakthrough on YouTube. According to those researchers, they used a controversial gene editing technology to manipulate the twins' data. The purpose? Not to cure or prevent an inherited disease, but something else entirely, supposedly giving these twin girls the ability to resist HIV infection. The gene surgery worked safely. No gene was changed except the one to prevent HIV infection. Seven couples were involved in the fertility treatments. All the potential fathers have HIV. The potential mothers did not. The scientist says the intention was not to prevent transmission, but instead to protect the child from being infected with HIV in the future. This morning in Hong Kong at the conference where the international community is gathering to discuss the implications of genetic editing, Dr. Jennifer Doudna telling us this. I think it's a break from what was recommended by the report released by the National Academy of Sciences last year, 2017, that encouraged an open and transparent approach to any uh, clinical use of human embryo editing that would involve careful uh, establishment of a process and following guidelines that were put in place by an international consortium of scientists. And I don't think that that appears to have been done in this case. And there has been no independent confirmation of the doctor's claim, but this announcement has already been widely condemned by scientists who say it is a dangerous precedent. Robin, this type of experimentation is illegal here in the U.S. and in most other countries. We're keeping that in mind, Arrow. Thank you so much. And Dr. Ashton is here now, so do tell. Okay, so first of all, Robin, this is not a new technology. And with this story, it's not a question of when whether this could be done at all. It's a question of if, when, why, and how. And let me just tell you what we're talking about. It's a technique called CRISPR, gene editing. You take a strand of DNA, which codes for genes, mm -hmm. and this CRISPR actually works like a scissors, removes the gene, and then this DNA heals itself. So whatever this gene codes for, a disease, a condition, in theory, maybe even other things like hair color, is now gone. What are the possible benefits of this use? Well, the excitement about this, Robin, is that it can be used to treat deadly diseases that are inherited. So it's being studied for cystic fibrosis, mm. something called Fanconi's anemia, uh, even for cataracts. The question here is, whether you can use it for other things and what those things will be. It's actually being studied intensively for use in food and agriculture to make certain types of products less susceptible to, to pestilence, right, viruses, right. that kind of thing. So let's talk about the risk and the ethical debate. Well, okay, so the, the risks here, when you talk about this, you have to understand this is not perfect. There can be inaccuracy, it can miss the target. If you take a gene out, future generations can be affected and then you could wind up with a situation where you have a lot of people with a disability or not a disability and is there a resultant stigma? And then if you really take this gene out on a mm -hmm. widespread basis, will there be major inequalities that are then more emphasized? So there are a a lot of really risks here and when you talk about this done for optional reasons right oh, yeah I want dark eyes I want blonde hair I want then you get into a really slippery slope and that's why for cosmetic reasons or non life-threatening mm. indications this is not even being discussed yeah, there is so much controversy surrounding this especially about the gene research exactly and so here's some historical context in 2017 the National Academy of Sciences put out massive widespread recommendations and guidelines for this 
which for which there was global agreement. They said this should not be done for something that there is already a treatment for, mm -hmm. like HIV, reducing risk of that. Uh, it should only be done in, in life or death situations. And caution should be used when doing this for human embryos. So they didn't give it a green light. They gave it a yellow light. And I think when you put that into context here, um, that's why you're seeing so much major uproar. I have a quote for you, Robin, okay. because this is coming from all over the world, including researchers and scientists in China. One professor from London quoted today as saying, this report of genome editing human embryos for resistance to HIV is premature, dangerous, and irresponsible. We have not heard the end of this story. It is going to cause massive uproar in the scientific and medical community. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, that. You bet. Appreciate it, Jim. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.